With the recent launch of Vision Pro, there is a lot of talk about the future of tech, but I want to take just a minute to look back and revisit some of my favorite vintage Apple products. I could easily have started this video with Apple's entire lineup of airport routers. The Airport Extreme was a solid router and Time Machine is still the easiest way to back up your Mac. But if I'm sticking to a single product, I'm going to choose the Airport Express. This hockey puck size box looked like a white version of the Apple TV. It existed before mesh routers were commonplace and could either act as the main router in a small home or extend the existing network of your Airport Extreme or Time Capsule. What made it extra special though was that it had an audio output on the back. You could connect to a stereo or directly to a set of speakers. You could then play music through it via AirPlay. Unfortunately, Apple discontinued its entire airport line years ago, foregoing the market to the likes of Lynxes, Netgear, and others. Few of them even support Apple HomeKit for routers, but I'll leave that whole rant for another video. Let me know down below in the comments if you're interested. This probably shows my age a little bit, but the next product on the list is the iPod Mini. Funny enough, it was this very device that brought me into the Apple ecosystem. Had I not gotten this iPod, I probably wouldn't be doing what I do today, covering Apple for a living. I remember the buying experience so clearly. We walked into our local CompUSA and I looked at all of the different colorful iPods before settling on this lovely green inside of the display case. I also remember the long trip home, sitting in the back of my parents' car with this little cube sitting at my feet and I was just dying to open it. I just fell in love with it. There's no way around it. And like many others, this was my gateway into the Apple ecosystem and later buying a Mac an Apple TV, an iPhone, and so much more. I even went as far as to repair iPods during high school, like installing larger hard drives or installing like colorful faceplates. This little iPod holds a lot of nostalgia and value to me. Let me know down below in the comments, what was the Apple device that brought you into the Apple ecosystem? Well, I did manage to get the iPod mini, I never did get the next item on my list. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hate to like rudely interrupt myself in the middle of a video because I have more cool things to talk about. But before we get to them, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Ivanki, that recently launched its Fusion Dock Max 1. It's designed exclusively for Apple Silicon Mac users and is the only dock on the market with a dual Thunderbolt connection. It is outfitted with 20 different ports, including plenty of USB-C, legacy USB-A, a fast 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, audio jacks, and HDMI. Here's one of my favorite things about it, though, is I love how all of the USB ports are standardized in full speed. Sometimes you get ones that are like 10 gigabit or 5 gigabit, and you have to pick and choose like which ones you're connecting your peripherals to based on what you're doing. No, not with this hub. It's a similar story with the monitor situation. Personally, I use USB-C and HDMI for my monitors. Rarely ever DisplayPort, yet most other docks that I have reviewed include a DisplayPort connection on the back. Ivanki chose what makes sense for its actual users. Most Apple users are out there using USB-C and HDMI. I love that those are the options here. Plus, on the top of the line Mac, you can actually run four monitors at once with this thing. That's absolutely incredible and unheard of in this market. The whole dock is powered by two Thunderbolt chips on the inside, so you know this thing is not going to lag. And the dock floats in the air, which promotes good airflow to keep it cool while it's sitting on your desk. If you're like me and you want to upgrade your workflow, check out the Ivanki Fusion Dock Max 1. It's linked down below in the description as well as pinned in the comments. Now, let's go get back to the rest of the video. The iPod Hi-Fi. This massive speaker launched in 2006, but was only on the market for less than two years. You would dock your iPod on top to get access to your music library and it would even charge while you jammed. There was also a remote for easy control. I yearned for the iPod Hi-Fi when I first heard it. It sounded so good and with the built-in handles, it was portable. 
you could plug it into the wall, but you could also run it off of six D-sized batteries for up to five hours. And yes, I did Google that. But with a price tag of $349, which is about $550 in buying power today, it wasn't cheap. And it wasn't moving the needle enough for Apple to keep it around. The next item on my list is a bit of a controversial pick. The internet loves to mock Apple for the magic mouse. A surefire way to rack up free internet points is by posting a picture of one charging upside down like a turtle on its back. I don't mind the magic mouse, but I loved the mouse that preceded it. It was known as the Mighty Mouse, and it is still one of my favorites of all time. The Mighty Mouse was more bulbous, comfortably filling your hand while you used it. Instead of the scroll wheel that so many other mice had, it had a scroll ball that would work in multiple orientations. You could scroll left and right, up and down, and even diagonally. To open Expose, you could just squeeze the mouse, as there was two pressure-sensitive buttons on either side that would react to different degrees of pressure. It was a lovely way to interact with your Mac, and the Magic Mouse today still doesn't have a way to open Expose nearly as easily. And yes, it did support both left and right click. It struggled though because of that top trackball. It could easily get clogged by dirt. This made it very hard to clean and could sometimes require taking the whole mouse apart. While I could keep choosing more physical Apple products, Apple socks anybody? I want to end this with the absolute goat of Apple software, Mac OS Snow Leopard. This is still celebrated by many as the absolute peak of Apple software. This release followed macOS Leopard and was a primarily maintenance update focusing on performance and stability. Back then, Apple used to charge for its software updates. macOS Leopard was $129, while Snow Leopard was a mere $29. This low price tag spurred adoption, a lesson Apple seems to have taken to heart as it no longer charges for any of its software updates. This was a monumental success for Apple, especially considering they proudly marketed it as having zero new features. It dropped support for the PowerPC, introduced OpenCL, and significantly decreased the memory footprint of the OS. It also happened to be the last version of macOS that included a startup video upon first boot. Man, do I miss those little videos. Apple has released some amazing products over the years, and everyone has their favorites that stick out to them. Maybe it's the iPhone 3G that introduced the App Store, or the largely colorful line of translucent iMacs. These are just some of my favorites, but I want to hear your stories too. Share your favorite vintage Apple stories down below in the comments, and be sure you are subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, and I'll keep you up to date with all of the new devices Apple has coming.